If you watch some of our previous videos, you may have noticed that we've been talking about cost optimization and how you can save money on Kubernetes. One of the biggest selling points of vCluster is being able to save money using multi-tenancy and sleep mode. Well, today what we're gonna do is take a look at two other tools you could use in combination with vCluster to save money, figure out how much you're spending, automatically resize different things that you're using and just cut down on costs uh, on the cloud or on-prem and, and just save money, I don't know. Let's get started. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So vCluster and cost optimization tools. So vCluster already cuts down on costs through multi-tenancy and sleep mode, but which tools can be used alongside vCluster to save even more? So let's check out two popular options. So KubeCost provides real-time cost visibility and insights for teams using Kubernetes, and then Cast AI, a Kubernetes automation platform that reduces cloud costs. So what is KubeCost? You know, what are some of the features? So some of the features of KubeCost are cost allocation, which breaks down costs by deployment, services, namespaces, and more. So most of the Kubernetes resources that you're used to, you can go ahead and figure out how much is this gonna cost and then how much can I charge for it? So along with cost allocation, we can do cost monitoring. So we can do cloud and or on-prem cost monitoring, hook into your cloud provider for real costs and then configure on-prem pricing for chargeback. So if you got a certain price that you want for a CPU or for a certain amount of memory, you can set a cost for that on-prem or what you can do is utilize your cloud provider's APIs to figure out what is that cost uh, for like EKS or, or GKE or something like that. And then it can also give you recommendations. So it can generate insights into how you can save more money based on your environment. So if, you're, if your environments are underutilized and you've got a couple of workloads running, then you can figure out, hey, maybe I should, you know, look into multi-tenancy and cut down on just giving everyone their own cluster, which is a reoccurring theme when, you know, you're talking about Kubernetes. And then we've got alerts and governance. So we can set budgets for different levels, teams, applications, and other. And then we have real-time alerting for budget overruns, anomalous spin patterns, and inefficient Kubernetes usage for tenants, like I was saying before. So you can get recommendations based on these, you know, alerts and then say, hey, this person's not using enough of their resources. They're using an entire cluster. Maybe I can put them on an EKS cluster where vCluster is running and cut down on how much I'm spending just for this one user or team. So when would you use KubeCost? If you're looking for insights into your current cloud spend, when you want to assign values to resources so you can create chargeback or pricing for tenants for on-prem, and then enterprise features beyond open costs are needed. So if, you've got, if you're using open costs and you're like, hey, I need, I need some of these enterprise features, then what you would do is move over to Kube costs, right? There's an open source version that you could check out, which we'll talk about in the last slide as maybe one of the next steps, but uh, let's go ahead and keep talking about Kube costs. So great for users who may have cloud resources and or on-prem and need a way to price out usage for tenants. People are gonna ask for, for large clusters. They're gonna ask for you know, a lot of resources until you start telling them how much it's gonna cost them. And if you can figure out how much it's gonna cost and then provide that to them, you know, in a report form or in a way that's easily digestible, then you can kind of cut down on how much you're spending and kind of get people using things that are more along the lines of what they need. So what is Cast AI? So Cast AI is a little bit different. It has some of the same features, but then it also goes a little bit further uh, for some of the other things it can do. So cloud cost optimization. So track and optimize Kubernetes clusters with automated scaling, provisioning, bin packing, and more. So using their own algorithms and stuff, they can figure out, you know, how to go ahead and reduce how many resources you're using by, you know, scheduling different different uh, worker nodes that are a little bit cheaper than what you're currently using. What does that mean? We got a little bit more of that on the next slide, but for the most part, think like, you know, spot instances or changing the size of worker nodes to something smaller if, if they're not actually being utilized. Kubernetes cost monitoring, break down costs by cluster, workloads, labels, and other Kubernetes resource types. And then they also have container security, vulnerability detection, config issue prioritization, and more. When would you use Cast AI? If you want to automate scaling of your clusters based on usage in real time, so it utilizes different cost saving measures like using spot instances, selects the most cost efficient VMs for nodes at any given time. So think worker nodes, like maybe, maybe I've got these expensive worker nodes that I'm using and I'm not actually utilizing all of them and I could be rescheduled to something a, a bit smaller. The cool thing about that as well is the resource rebalancing, which we'll talk about in a second. So when you need cost monitoring plus optimization plus container security in an all-in-one platform, that's when you think about Cast AI. If you want fully automated resource rebalancing and auto-scaling based on usage patterns or spikes. So say you've got a spike and you need to go ahead and get bigger worker nodes, that way you can actually scale up. This could actually do that for you. If you you know, after that spike's done, you don't really need it anymore. Maybe you are like, hey, let's go ahead and use some spot instances and save some money because we're not going to have much load for like another couple of days or something like that. Maybe there's a big sale and you've got, you know, a SaaS store or store something like that running. Um, then what it can do is go ahead and use those spot instances instead. And then just constantly, you know, change how things are being used and reducing costs whenever it can based on usage. If you need something with a broader focus than just cost optimization, that's when you want to look into Cast AI. So what are some next steps that you can do 
after you've looked at vCluster and a couple of other things and you want to go ahead and start saving money. So both vendors have quick start guides on how you can get started, as well as a free tier. If you want to go with something open source, the CNCF project, then you can start out with open cost, which is currently in the CNCF sandbox. That's, that'll kind of give you a taste of what the cost optimization tools will look like. It's less feature rich than Kube Cost Enterprise, but it gives you an idea of how things look and how you can use it and how you can utilize it. So definitely something to check out if you just want to stay the open source route and you don't want to pay for anything yet, but you want to try it out and say, hey, is this for us? Is this going to help us? And then maybe look at, you know, the free tier and then some of the enterprise options from these, these two vendors. And then what you should do is combine either of these with the vCluster platform for even more cost savings through multi-tenancy and through sleep mode. So what is sleep mode? It puts virtual clusters to sleep, which means that vCluster platform will set replica sets to zero. This means that Kubernetes will delete all pods, but the entire configuration of the resources within the virtual cluster is still there. So when it comes back up, everything's still there, it's still running, but you can go ahead and save money because it's not running when you do not need it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this was helpful. Just kind of give you a little bit of an introduction to two different tools you can use to save money and look into how much you're actually spending on certain things, right? It's great to have insight into how much you're spending because then you can actually do something with it, right? You need to monitor things. And then after that, you can make decisions that are more educated on how and where you can save money. I'll see you next time. If you have any questions or if you have any feedback on like what you're using and how these have helped you out, Post it in the comments. Maybe I missed something about, you know, Kube Cost or Cast AI that's super important that that you value that maybe uh, wasn't covered here. If you if you do, let me know and uh, see you next time.